Another day in another shelter. Supermarkets have become one of the hardest hit stores. So gangs are now taking over homes and apartments in New York. This surveillance video shows what's starting to look like a pattern of armed robbery. I'm going to do something slightly different for today's video. I've got an insistent office assistant that wants to stay on my lap. So if she jumps up or makes a little bit of sound, please give her a little break. She needs the attention. Now, today I want to talk about how the YouTube game is only going to get harder, not easier. And what I found is in order to get a leg up in this hyper competitive game is to lock in a formula and then stick with it. And that's exactly what I did with the YouTuber whose style I mimic today. We're going to dive into that right now. Retention is easily one of the biggest obstacles to overcome. And since that's what I'm working hardest at improving, I thought I'd look to Cash Jordan for some inspiration. I've worked away at the YouTube game for a long time now and tried many different approaches until I finally found one that works for me. So if you're looking for a step-by-step -step formula that brings in results, keep watching. In case you aren't familiar with Cash Jordan, here's a quick rundown of his work. Cash Jordan's actual name is reversed. His legal name is Jordan Cash, and at the time of this video, he still holds an active realtor's license. It's been almost five years since Cash launched his YouTube channel, and there's a huge difference between his video style then and what he's producing now. Here are a couple of Cash's past intros. You've heard people say that New York City apartments are small, but how small are we talking? Let's go find out. If today's apartment doesn't work for you, I don't know if New York's gonna work for you. Because this... Oh, this is awesome. As you can see, the video is centered around his profession, which is in real estate. No pre-rolls, big difference in production quality. He's definitely come a long way. Then one day, Cash stumbled upon a video topic that proved a winner. Armed with a winning topic, Cash would go on to perfecting his video sequence in less than five weeks, which is really quite amazing. Now I'm gonna share with you all the notes I took from watching several of Cash's videos and studiously dissecting them to see exactly why they're successful. The first 30 seconds of your video are easily the most crucial. After all, there's a reason YouTube tracks that specific metric. The higher your stick rate in the first 30 seconds, the higher the odds of people watching your video right through to the end, giving you those valuable watch time. There are many different takes on the percentage of the retention you should be aiming for, but the generally accepted wisdom appears to be this. If you're below 40% retention within the first 30 seconds of your video, you need to improve. If you're at 40 to 50%, you're doing okay but there's still room for improvement. And if you're at 70% or more, you're definitely where you need to be. A 100% retention score is impossible, but striving for it is definitely a worthwhile mission. The first thing that jumped out at me when I started studying Cash's videos were his pre-rolls, and they are always the same. Shoplifting is becoming all too common in the five boroughs. Supermarkets have become one of the hardest hit stores, and one local chain is now taking matters into their own hands, beefing up their security. Outdoor diners, beware. This surveillance video shows what's starting to look like a pattern of armed robberies at outside restaurants. Police are trying to figure out whether the holdups are connected. So you see that? That opening clip is a montage of news headlines, and each one of Cash's pre-rolls will have the same length, which is anywhere between 10 to 15 seconds, with 12 seconds being the average. So why does this work for Cash? Well, they all apply to our senses at the same time. News headlines, when read by anchors, are typically typically delivered with an urgent and dire tone. More often than not, Cash will use the sound of sirens from police cars or ambulances during those pre-rolls. This captivates viewers on the audio front. The visual imagery is no different. Scenes of looting and other crimes, as well as police taping off crime scenes, never fails to captivate the viewer on a visual scale. I really like this approach, and you can see it in action either by starting this very video over again, or by checking out this past intro. If you can get these three things right, then you're completely off to the races. Today we talk YouTube Partner Program. Today I'm going to you... talk about how much money I've made on YouTube in my We're introducing earlier access to the YouTube Partner Program. The song the I've chosen for all of my pre-rolls is called Silk Road, and you can find that song in the YouTube audio library. I chose it specifically for the urgent sounding beat, and I find it really adds severity to the visual content in the pre-roll. I've also settled on keeping my pre-rolls as close to 12 seconds as possible. I feel this is just short enough to keep my audience wanting more. And this brings us to the next component in Cash's formula. Personally, I prefer doing faceless video. I feel they allow you to get your work done faster, but admittedly, I've also found that showing your face 
even occasionally, does boost viewership. And that's why I splice in segments of myself talking to the camera like I am right now. And I do admittedly feel like I'm in the movie Inception right now talking about this. Just one quick tip from an introvert to any potential introverts watching this right now. If you're reluctant about being in front of a camera like I am, be yourself. It really is as simple as that. Just go with me on this one. If you check out the talking head portion of Cash's videos, you'll notice they're very animated and boisterous. I was sometimes like this when I was younger, but definitely not now. I'm convinced Cash does it this way more as a pattern interrupt than anything else. I've come to find that just a few seconds is really all you need here, and that's why I script a short portion of each section to be talking head. By the way, check out the show notes and you'll find a link to the script to this very video to see exactly how I write everything out to plan my videos. Now let's jump to the next portion of Cash's formula. After Cash runs his pre-roll, then delivers his 20 to 25 seconds of talking head intro, the third component will always be a B-roll made up of news headlines. By this point in the equation, Cash has already locked down those precious first 30 seconds, and the B-roll, with all its stimuli, is the surest bet he has to lock you in for another minute. And that's essentially what the B-roll is, a one-minute version of the pre-roll he uses to open each video. Personally, this is something I'm still trying to figure out myself, as this extended B-roll works perfectly for Cash's subject matter, which largely lends itself to crime. So far, I've done it for a couple of other videos, and and what I found works is keeping the sound bite and video clips in your roll to no more than five seconds at a time. If you can successfully pull this off, your pre-roll, talking head intro, and b-roll all together are adding a total of 90 extra seconds of watch time to each video. I can't know for sure if Cash's formula will work for you. As I mentioned earlier, he has a very specific subject matter. Even if you swipe this structure to improve your score for the first 30 seconds of your videos, I think you're off to a great start. At the time of this video, I'm starting to see an improvement in my retention scores and my average view duration is also showing improvement. Once again, if you want an even closer look at how I'm approaching all this, you can find a link to the script for this very video in the show notes. This will show you exactly how I break things down and structure the flow of my script so that every video has the exact same opening flow. I might consider doing a future video on how I build my content in chunks and how this helps me produce higher quality videos faster. So if if that's something that interests you, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing so I can share more of the YouTube growth strategies I'm using so that you can grow too.